What's up, people? How's it going? So today we're talking about, as you might suspect, genetics in bodybuilding. Now, are genetics everything? Are they nothing? Well, it's somewhere in the middle. Also, it's a lot more complicated than you might think. There is no such thing as good genetics or bad genetics. The human genome has about 20 to 25,000 genes, so it's not like you just have one gene that builds muscle or strength. It's very complicated, and that's what we're going to get into today. First of all, let's look at bone structure. Now, this is going to be mostly genetically determined. There are some nutrition factors, especially at a young age. But typically, if your parents are tall, you are going to be tall. If your parents are very broad-shouldered, you will typically also be broad-shouldered. Now, why does this have a big impact? The more bone you have, the more muscle you can build. This is like if you're building a house. If you have more real estate, you can build a bigger house. You can build more on three acres of land than one acre of land. It's just simple math. If you have narrow shoulders, should you go jump off a bridge? No, of course not. Phil Heath has narrow shoulders. He has narrow clavicles. And yet he looks amazing. He's a multi-time Mr. Olympia. So just because you don't have a perfect frame doesn't mean you can't build an impressive physique. It's just one factor of many. Another factor is how big your joints are. Now I'm not talking like Snoop Dogg joints. I'm talking your actual connective tissue, like your elbows, your shoulders, your knees. If these are small, your muscles will appear bigger. So someone like Flex Wheeler, he almost has a comic book look. He looks like a cartoon character because his joints are so small, yet his muscles are so big. It gives him an almost inhuman, incredible look. Now, this is partially genetics, and you can't really make yourself have small joints. It's just how it is. Another factor is where your tendon inserts into the bone. So this varies quite a bit, and it varies for every single muscle. Something like calves, if your calf inserts very high, you will never have impressive looking calves, just because you don't have, again, that real estate to build a lot of muscle. Now, I see some people in China who have amazing calves. I saw this guy the other day, and I took a video of his calves. I was a complete creep, just because his calves were freaking amazing. And I guarantee you, he's never been to the gym. He's like this, this fat old Chinese guy with just fucking huge calves. It was amazing. And this is just genetics, nothing else. And you could say this of just about any muscle. Some people's lats, they insert very high into the back, giving them a very sort of winged look, but it does limit the overall size of the back. Again, less real estate. The biceps, the triceps, the chest, the quads, the hamstrings, every single muscle will vary with exactly how it is shaped, mostly based on where it inserts into the joint. Is it possible that you have bad genetics for every single muscle group? I guess, you know, hypothetically. But your body has hundreds of different muscles, and the odds of you having quote-unquote bad genetics for every single muscle is so astonishingly low that it's really not even worth considering. Yes, some people do have better genetics in this regard, but I really don't think that someone is going to have good genetics for every single muscle group or bad genetics for every single muscle group. Just the odds, statistically, of that happening is so, so low. Next, let's talk about testosterone levels. So many people are asking me, oh, I'm 28 years old, should I go on TRT? No, you shouldn't go on TRT. You don't need to go on TRT, okay? Um, if you're 40, if you're 50, sure, consider it. But I think a lot of people are doing it too early, and it's almost like a cop-out. Testosterone levels are important, obviously. But it's been shown that if you're in the normal range, having, you know, a 20% testosterone boost is not gonna do anything for your muscle. Yeah, if you inject a gram a week or something, you'll see big results. But if you take like some herb that says it increases your testosterone by 20%, that is not gonna do anything. If your testosterone levels go up, what is called sex hormone binding globulin is going to go up as well. It will bind more of the testosterone and thus, thus less will be freely available. So it's sort of like a self-limiting equation. You can't just try to like pump your testosterone up by taking cold showers and expect to see a big difference. Another factor is the testosterone receptors. So 
Your level of testosterone is a factor, but what is more important is the muscles. There are receptors in the muscles. A hormone without a receptor does nothing, nothing at all. You have to have the hormone bind to the receptor, which causes an effect. If you have high testosterone, but you have no receptors, it's not going to do anything. So if you see people who actually blow up when they do a cycle of testosterone, usually these people have a lot of receptors, particularly in the shoulders and traps, which naturally, or unnaturally, have a lot of receptors. Testosterone receives by far the most attention from a muscle building standpoint, but keep in mind that stuff like cortisol, estrogen, growth hormone, and many others can also have a big impact on how quickly you grow muscle. Another factor is fiber type. So I said in a different video, fiber type is not important for your training. And for the most part, that is true. I don't think you should like go by your fiber type when you're planning your training. It's just not that big a factor. However, it is true that fiber type does vary a bit. And if someone has mostly fast twitch muscle fibers, those hypertrophy a little bit more easily. So they will typically gain muscle a little bit faster. If someone is like a slow twitch marathoner, often, they will have trouble gaining muscle. Another factor is how many muscle fibers you have. Now this obviously varies. We don't all have the same exact number of muscle fibers. It does vary. And if some lucky bastard has more muscle fibers, guess what? They're probably going to be bigger. Not always, but they probably have more potential. Another factor is the satellite cells. These surround the muscle fiber and during training or after training, they are donated into the muscle which allows the muscle to grow. Some people, again, these lucky bastards, they just have more satellite cells. And so their potential is probably higher. Now, how many muscle fibers do you have? How many satellite cells do you have? You don't know, okay? You don't know, and it's gonna be very difficult to test if it's even possible at all. So, should you worry about this? No, you should not worry about this. Why am I telling you? because it is important, not so you can worry about it if you have a lot or if you have a little. Just train hard, work hard, train smart, and do the best you can. The main thing that I want you to take away from this video is never, ever, ever use your genetics as an excuse. Do not do this. I see this all the time and it's horrible. If you say, I have bad genetics, are you going to achieve your potential? No, probably not because you're gonna say, I have bad genetics, and you're gonna use that as an excuse not to work hard, not to plan your meals out, not to go to the gym, not to push a set, not to educate yourself, not to have a plan, and all of these factors are vital. Yes, if you have a study doing five sets of 10, some people will grow really well, some people will grow a little bit, some people won't grow at all, and some people might lose muscle, and you don't know where you are, but I guarantee if you work really, really hard for many years, you can absolutely change your physique. Whether you are amazingly gifted or not gifted at all, there is a way to develop the body of your dreams. So don't use genetics as an excuse. Instead, embrace yourself and assess yourself so you can get to the next level. That's it for today. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you have any questions down below, and I will see you next time. Peace.